Welcome to a cult of personality, esoteric podcast extraordinaire at a cult of personality.net. I'm your host, Greg Kaminsky. A cult of personality podcast is also available on iTunes, Spreaker, Stitcher Radio, and all the best podcast apps. This is episode number 169, featuring an interview with author Gordon White about his recent book, The Chaos Protocols, Magical Techniques for Navigating the New Economic Reality. The Cult of Personality podcast is made possible by you, the listeners, and by the subscribers to the Occult of Personality membership section. I'd like to remind you that although you're able to listen to this podcast at no charge, the costs for me to bring it to you are significant. Your financial contributions make sure the free podcast goes on. Please support a cult of personality by joining the membership section or by donating via the donate button on the occult of personality.net website or via Patreon at patreon.com slash occult of personality. And if you're already supporting the show or have done so in the past, my heartfelt thanks, and I salute you. Occult of Personality podcast is also sponsored by Miskatonic Books, an online store that focuses on the esoteric, occult, ceremonial magic, Freemasonry, Rosicrucianism, witchcraft, the Golden Dawn, as well as dark fantasy, classic horror, and supernatural fiction. They carry books by all your favorite esoteric publishers as well. Just visit MiskatonicBooks.com. Temple of Thelema is a true outer order of the greater mysteries, providing ceremonial initiation, structured training, and regular group work, all in conformity with the principles of the Book of the Law. An investment of time, effort, and commitment is expected from each member. Each is expected to aspire fervently to the great work, to dare, with courage undaunted, to perfect that work and ever to apply his or her best effort to effect harmony within the order and within the world in general. Founded in service to the AA, College of Thelema seeks to guide the student to an understanding of the law of Thelema. Most especially, this means a deeper understanding of oneself and of one's true will. A combination of instruction techniques is employed, including seminars, written texts, an individual work. For over 40 years, College of Thelema has published journals in the Continuum and Black Pearl, as well as several books on occult subjects maintaining high standards in Thelemic education. Visit Temple of Thelema at www.thelema.org. Now, in episode number 168, an excellent interview with author Gordon White about his recent book, The Chaos Protocols, Magical Techniques for Navigating the New Economic Reality. The years since the financial crash have seen the realization dawn that the great promise of modern civilization will go unfulfilled. Study hard. Work hard, buy a house, retire happy. It's all a lie, spun for the benefit of a tiny elite. The richest 85 people on earth have as much wealth as the poorest 3.5 billion. Each month, the numbers change, but they never improve. 
magical and spiritual discourse has failed to keep up with this new reality. The Chaos Protocols aims to fix that. Join Gordon White as he shows you how to use chaos magic not only to navigate these trying times, but to triumph as well. Discover how to become invincible through initiation and wage the mind war that will keep you moving toward what you really want. From sigil magic to working with spiritual allies, the Chaos Protocols helps you act on the unwavering belief that your life should matter and you're not going to let something as trifling as the apocalypse get in the way of it. Gordon White runs one of the leading chaos magic blogs, Rune Soup, at runesoup.com. He has worked nationally and internationally for some of the world's largest digital and social media companies. Gordon White appeared previously in a Cult to Personality podcast episode 162, talking about his recent book Starships, A Prehistory of the Spirits. As before, this new episode with Gordon is densely packed with detailed Q&A about the contents of his book, and he graciously abides. I've done my best to provide you with a quality, in-depth examination of Gordon's work in his two recent books because I feel that his work is extremely relevant. Enjoy. Gordon White, I want to welcome you back to A Cult of Personality podcast. Thank you so much for taking some time to join us this evening and discuss your most recent book. Well, thank you very much, Greg. It's a pleasure to be back. Thank you. So tonight we're going to be talking about the Chaos Protocols, Magical Techniques for Navigating the New Economic Reality. Um, brilliant book um, published by Llewellyn. And boy, I've just got so many questions for you about it. Um, so I just will launch right into them. Um, you spend a good portion of the beginning of your book discussing the current world economic situation and how we arrived at it. Um, could you just summarize your perspective and why you think it's important to understand it? Well, yeah, sure. So the current sort of economic environment that we're in is probably only about 20% cyclical. So it's 20% boom and bust and 80% uh, something else. And that something else is a fundamental transformation. So once every couple of centuries, it seems, something like this happens. And there are a number of forces that are impacting this sort of fundamental change. It's the rise of automation. Uh, it's the sort of onboarding of, of all economic activity into stock exchanges and indexes around the world. And uh, finally, it's the demography of the largest economies on Earth, in particular in Western Europe and the United States. So we're kind of in the very early days of an industrial revolution. And that would be the thunder and lightning I mentioned earlier, mm. because I live in a vampire cartoon. <laughs> that was a great, great timing. Yeah, exactly. We're talking about the end of the world. And uh, yes, the, in fact, I should have just said I have sound effects on my laptop here and I'm just going to press them like a radio DJ. The next one will be maybe <laughs> someone hitting a donkey. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, excuse me. So when it comes to how our situation is addressed magically, there are probably some things that may or may not have worked in the past, but it certainly will not work moving into the future. So magic at a, at a sort of broader level, or at least practical enchantment, is effectively probability enhancement. So that's all well and good, and that should in theory work you know, anywhere and everywhere, because it's probably some kind of underlying consciousness effect. Uh, so it could, it should work on Mars. But if we are optimizing probabilities that either will never have uh, the outcomes that they used to in, say, the 70s or 80s, if we're doing that, then we're not really positioning ourselves to, we're not positioning ourselves for optimization. And as a result, uh, I kind of had to really uh really start the book i guess with sort of a, a slap in the face with a wet fish just to kind of wake people up as to where we are uh and it's not like it's uh I, i'm not particularly apocalyptic uh i actually think 
well, I, I went to pains to show that there is uh, opportunity in transition um, because there certainly is. But that opportunity isn't uh, evenly distributed and it's probably in areas that we don't know yet. So we have to learn to look. I mean, the most desirable jobs in the year 2025 don't exist yet and that's not that far away. Yeah, it's a, it definitely seems like a time of transition. It's hard for me to articulate, but to understand this uh, difference between what a, a wealth magic book that people are used to and what you've written here, which is something far greater, in my opinion. Well, so funnily enough, when uh, my editor at Llewellyn, Alicia, and I were going backwards and forwards uh, about what this book would be, because I sort of initially said no um, when they approached, and not out of a Llewellyn judgment, obviously, it was more, I don't have a how-to book in me, I don't really think that's my road, and I feel like we have enough of them out there. And so we sort of went backwards and forwards, saying, well, what, what would I write about? So I'm not going to do a how-to chaos magic book. And we, so we're spitting topics. And I said, I'm also not going to do, I'm not going to do a money magic book because money is a subset of thinking about the world in a different way. And it's all, it's not even a wealth magic book. It's, I, I've kind of coined a term for it. It's a success magic book. It's, it's a book of uh, probability enhancement, essentially. Now, the thing about you know, money or wealth is that it does give you that optionality to chase after the things or achieve the things you want much easier than if you don't have it. Uh, there we go again with the lightning. Yeah, emphasis so, added. Exactly, it's brilliant. Uh, you know, thank you, Thor. <laughs> so I, I, I kind of understand what you're getting at there with its struggle to be categorized because I call it a success magic book. So the chaos in the title, the chaos protocols is a reference to the world we're in rather than magic. So it's a magic book written by a chaos magician rather than a chaos magic book. Yeah. I think that's an important distinction. Um, maybe we can get into that a little bit later on. Sure. Uh, what do you see are as, uh, the shortcomings, uh, with regard to the whole materialistic worldview? Well, materialism isn't particularly good at describing material. So I, I, I'm surprised it has persisted. Well, I, I mean, I'm not surprised it's persisted for as long as it has in popular culture because it has been deliberately pushed. There are, you know, you end up with kind of really murky funding behind the likes of atheist groups and academic departments. And there are a number of, you know, fairly scary reasons in the background as, as to why that would be the case. But if you actually talk to philosophers, uh, materialism hasn't been a sophisticated position to take for decades. And, and I mean, 40 years more. So we're kind of stuck. Uh, well, I guess people who might watch a Kardashian program are stuck assuming that's true. And then everyone thinks it is when it's not just, you know, magicians and mystics who find it absurd. It's actually people who do philosophy. So it's uh, it's inert. There's nothing in it. Uh, it. It fails. It's very easy to knock over. You actually only need one piece of evidence. So that kind of uh, the black swan effect, you need one piece of evidence that demonstrates that there are other mechanisms of action beyond the physical in the world. And the whole thing falls over. Mm -hmm. We have about 120 years of, uh, you know, verified, replicated laboratory experiments that demonstrate that. And we also have just our personal experience of things like very common psi effects like telephone telepathy and, and all these kind of things. So it's there to be dismissed. Uh, it doesn't even need to be fought. It's, it's kind of like a like a guest who got too drunk at, at, at a party and kind of uh, overstayed his or her welcome. And it's just kind of weird that they're still there. And that's sort of how I, I, I view materialism. And funnily enough, if we don't, well, let me put it this way, there is considerable magical upside to kind of increasing your philosophical sophistication or awareness of the different kind of philosophical schools that are out there um, and, and being able to defend them. So I also don't particularly like uh, panpsychism. I'm okay with idealism. I, I, I can kind of, I prefer and tend to defend animism, but it's because I 